Hey guys, welcome back to the Hardware Sense channel. We are moving on to the new video now. We are gonna start a new series, and this is gonna be with the Lenovo Idea Center T540, another pre-build, this time from Lenovo. Very similar uh, details and very similar insights and very similar uh, hardware as previously reviewed HP Pavilion Gaming Desktop, the Walmart Special. There are several differences though I would like to mention. We're gonna do a lot of comparison. We're gonna show some of the upgrades of this computer, one of the possibilities that you guys might consider if you get this one on a good deal. I'm gonna start off the price and tell you that if you're buying it straight from Lenovo, this little computer is gonna cost you a little bit more than the uh, Walmart Special uh, and this is this is it, actually. Look how big it is. Uh, not much uh, bigger than the HP, actually. Uh, it's a lot slimmer. The width is slimmer, but uh, the height is slightly higher. So uh, they're not really compensating volume with this, but at the same time, it's pretty compact. So again, if you're traveling, if you want to bring it up somewhere, put it on you know, your, your travel bag uh, and a fly with it for a long period of time if you were you know considering gaming and all that stuff it'll be fine to do it no problem uh we're gonna go with all around uh, the box with all the details and everything and talk about it uh but uh, uh many many things to mention here that lenovo have done better and a lot of things that they have not done uh so good compared to the hp uh, pavilion gaming desktop now one of the first things to mention if you look at the case outside uh, we have two more ports uh, we have obviously four usb 3s one of his uh, two of them are usb 3.1 and we have usb c as well just like on the hp a card reader and microphone plus headphone jack right there in the front nice little ornament here and when the computer is on uh, you will see on the video as well there's like a blue LED light uh, coming through here. A very nice touch. We have a Lenovo logo in the, on the bottom. Uh, one of the things really is to mention in this computer, and you guys are gonna see details a little bit later, is it's the inclusion of intake fan, which you guys saw me uh, do a modification for the HP because it was not there. And I really believe that you needed to get better temps. Here we have a fan but unfortunately not a lot of clearance between the fan and the front panel uh, not a lot of breathing room you see the only uh, opening is on the bottom and if you have this computer on the ground especially if you have like carpet and stuff like that uh, you're gonna block this intake and the other uh, little intake is right here so along the bottom side of the ornament to about right here again you're gonna see the details uh, there's an opening to uh, get the air back in to the box but again in my opinion not enough so it is what it is on the side we have perforations uh, you notice that on the hp they were on the opposite side kind of towards the front of the case and they were a lot more and bigger these are not enough in my opinion uh and then in the back these are the ports we have two more uh four more usb 3.0s lan uh vga which is uh, supposed to be covered with this rubber piece on ball headphone and microphone jack here LAN of course uh, you will see the 1660 ti here this computer comes with the 1660 ti but i'll tell you the story a little bit later and we have the uh, very little proprietary 310 platinum power supply the exhaust fan you will see that's upgraded it's 80 millimeters so some rubber feet on the bottom I'll put it down because I'm getting exhausted holding it, although it's not very heavy, but still. All right, so what's, what's inside this computer? Uh, just like on the HP, we have the Intel uh, 9th generation i5-9400F combined with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 uh, 2666 uh, megahertz RAM. Uh, this is one plus that Lenovo has better over uh, the HP. You have 16 gigabytes of RAM instead of just eight. But uh, you guys saw the upgrade to 16 is very easy and not expensive. If you go to the cheaper route, as mentioned, if you are able to get this Lenovo one on a cheaper price around 500, it's a great deal. 
uh, but normally I think they sell around 600 700 they have several different SKUs uh, but this particular one with a 1660 Ti and uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM was around 600 I think uh, around Black Friday they also had deals last summer they had deals but the one this one I bought uh, actually is from eBay uh, and the seller has made a lot of upgrades which most of these upgrades are something I would have done myself personally so when I saw this one oh I said hey this is just perfect this is exactly fitting my profile and what I want to see and do um, and I will tell you uh, all about it and show you the details we're gonna do several different videos with tests and upgrades and all that stuff but uh, as of now, uh, we're going to talk about it uh, as this computer came uh, in, into me. Uh, so normally this SKU comes with 1660 Ti, but the owner has upgraded it to RTX 2060. This is the RTX 2060 you guys saw that I put on the HP Gaming uh, Pavilion Gaming Desktop. This is exactly the same card that came with this uh, Lenovo pre-built. And quick note, remember the power supply on the HP is 400 watt and on this uh, particular uh, think center is only 310 watt. So even with RTX 2060, there is no problem guys. This is plenty of power for the RTX 2060 and all the other components to work normally. Uh, I personally had slight doubts, but uh, the owner said he have uh, had it this way for many, many months and played games with no problem. I did the same when I received it. I tested a long time, played all kinds of games. Our computer never failed. So the 310 watt power supply is good enough. How much we're drawing off the wall. I'm going to do a separate video and measure uh, all those powers with this computer and the HP with different graphics card as well. Uh, to make uh, to to put out the exact numbers on uh, for you guys so you can see it but 310 watts in my opinion and as tested are good enough for these components plus RTX 2060 anyway going back it's coming with 1660 Ti I swapped the 2060 uh, from this computer to the HP and I put the 1660 Ti from the HP to this computer and my logic of that is not because of power but because of sheer volume of the case and heat exhausted inside uh, the hp pavilion desktop is slightly bigger slightly wider so it has a little bit more room inside the actual case for these components to breed and that rtx 2060 exhausts a lot more heat than the 1660 ti so being inside that tiny uh, case of the lenovo it definitely produces a lot more heat that i'm not very comfortable with and I really don't want to have that side panel open. Um, I like the uniformity and how nice it looks when everything is closed. So I think this was a better decision to just swap those components. This way, the HP with all the upgrades are a lot cooler and the 2060 can bring a lot better. And the Lenovo with all the upgrades and the 1660 Ti can breed a lot better and it's a lot, lot cooler than before. What else is inside? Of course, uh, we have the, like I mentioned, uh, the Intel 9400F, exactly the same six core processor that was in the HP uh, Pavilion desktop. Uh, good enough for gaming, good enough for many, many, many things. So uh, all of you that are on a budget, all of you that have uh, any doubts about this, don't watch uh, any of my videos. I have tons of gaming testing uh, and this processor is absolutely great for what you need. The upgrades. Uh, that the seller may have made on this computer is he has installed uh, additionally three uh, fans those are Noctua NFA 8 uh, 80 millimeter fans one for intake one for exhaust and one was uh, replacing the stock one for the uh, cooling solution but what I additionally did as you guys saw uh, and in some of these uh, um, images I installed the Big Cherry Can 3 uh, I loved it so much on the HP game, Pavilion Gaming Desktop that I went ahead and installed it on this Lenovo as well. The installation is so much easier and so much quicker than what was on the HP simply because uh, Lenovo has gone to the route of not creating this uh, proprietary backplate combo with a socket retention plate. 
Uh, it's dedicated backplate. It's not glued in. It's not stick in. So all you need to do is just to take the motherboard out, take the plate, and replace everything. Very easy, very quick, and I suggest everybody that has this computer to go ahead and that and do that upgrade. You're gonna have a huge, huge difference in some temperatures. In this particular case, it's way over 15 degrees Celsius stock. Even with the uh, Noctua NF8 uh, upgrade that this uh, previous uh, owner of this computer have made uh, the difference was just huge not only on temperatures but also sound level these 80 millimeter nocturnal fans they're not too quiet oh, obviously they have to work extra to push all that air out and being 80 millimeter doesn't help so when you put the big shuriken 3 with a 12 uh, millimeter fan in there uh, it's a lot lot quiet trust me it's just a huge huge difference uh, the other upgrade the previous owner has done is replaced the stock Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapter, which I think was uh, the stock one was from Realtek. He put the new uh, Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX uh, adapter, much, much better. Uh, I personally would have never done this upgrade because I really don't care about Wi-Fi. Uh, I, I run LAN cables around my house. It's much faster and better reliability wise, uh, but it's a valid upgrade. If you're relying on Wi-Fi, why not get one of those adapters? It's super fast, super reliable. Obviously, Intel is great. Uh, also, the LAN adapter on this Lenovo is Intel. So I do that upgrade on all of my uh, configurations and all my computers for many, many years. And this was very smart uh, on his part to do, uh, especially being one terabyte, plenty of room for all your installs. No hard drives, no moving parts, uh, silence and reliability. Um, speaking of the NVMe drive, the stock NVMe uh, drive is 256 gigabyte, same as the one on the HP, uh, but this one is uh, Samsung. I think the HP one was Toshiba. I forgot, but could have been Samsung as well. Anyway, this one is Samsung as well. Very good drive. Uh, it's not obviously the fastest, but uh, it's much faster than any uh, SATA 3 SSD drives. Speaking of the power supply that I mentioned earlier, the 310 watt platinum power supply. This one is made by Akbel on the Lenovo, on the HP was uh, made by uh, Lighton. Very, very good power supplies, extremely quiet. Even when RTX 26 was inside this case and I was running all the tests uh, full on, uh, you can barely hear the power supply fan turn on so very very good um, don't hesitate if you have this computer to upgrade to rtx 26. Um, we're gonna look at some temperatures and some performance but like i mentioned and you guys can see stock versus uh, the upgrades huge huge difference in temperature especially with 1660 ti instead of rtx 2060 because being a lot smaller card and a lot shorter uh, it's not as close to the side panel and has more room in the back for greeting and definitely the 1660 ti being a cooler card uh, in general with less wattage to consume generates less heat so it's a lot better overall for the computer inside uh, that's why we have uh, lower temperatures across uh, all the components. Now the intake and the exhaust uh, and Noctua and FA8s are doing a decent job, slightly on the louder side, uh, more than I'm uh, comfortable with really. Um, not, uh, not anything obscene, but at the same time you can hear them, especially if that computer is on your desk right next to you. Um, again, at the same time, if you have headphones on and playing some guys, games, you're never gonna hear them. Uh, but if you are having this computer in your bedroom, uh, quiet at night and you're trying to sleep, you're definitely gonna hear these uh, 80 millimeter um, fans. The one in the back and the one in the front are installed with these rubber isolators that are stock Noctua ones, uh, which is very good for to reducing some of the uh, vibrations. But again, as mentioned at the same time, 80 millimeter fans are noisy in general uh, for the most part uh, especially when you want them to move a little bit more air uh, to make a difference after the installing the big shuriken 3 we definitely lower the noise down and the temperatures down uh, because uh, of how great this uh, heat sink and fan is how effective is this case uh, being slimmer i think uh, lenovo could have done a lot better uh, job if they had maybe a half an inch width more on this case 
Um, this way they would have increased the volume a little bit more and that would have improved uh, the overall performance and uh, the temperatures of the components inside because you would have probably be able to install 90 92 millimeter fan just like we the one we have on the HP and that would have been a killer um, kind of concept but they went to the route of creating this super slim and narrow case which is good for compact measures you know if you will have to move it or travel with it it's, it's fine but as an effectiveness it's not that great also the perforations on the side are not that great uh, great thought about installing and putting a placement for intake fan uh, which you know have to mention that it doesn't come with one by default but you can install one for yourself very little difference um, just a couple of degrees but again uh, it's probably better to have it than not have it you don't have to draw anything you don't have to do any you know <laughs> manual work like I did for the HP especially if it's in your desk and not down on the carpet it, you know you have a little bit more of a breathing room Ideally, I would have loved to see some sort of implementation of a better uh, mesh on the front where the fan is so they can uh, really breathe and bring some more fresh air inside the case, but uh, that's what they went with. Um, the other thing to mention is uh, more uh, I.O. ports in the front. That's always welcome. Uh, I really like that. Any future upgrades? What in the future I can do? Um, I can test with some other cards other than RTX 2060, but uh, it really I will not go anywhere above just because of the power supply. Uh, if they had a bigger one, it would have been great. But 310 watt, uh, I think it's a little, it's going to be a little bit on the edge if you want to step up to 2060 Super or 2070. Uh, I don't know what new generations are Nvidia going to bring us this year, but. Uh, we'll see what kind of tdp some of these cards have uh, so maybe we'll, we'll do upgrades with that i'm planning to keep this computer because i like it so much i think it's very good and compact and um, it's kind of kind of cool performance you know it's uh, it's it's something that i will be able to toss, toss in my bag and just carry it and uh, whenever i travel somewhere for a long time i can really game on that one gtx 1660 ti uh, fits perfectly inside it's uh have enough room from the side panel, have enough room in the front. So this is really nice as well. And what other future upgrades you can do? If you are uh, keen on getting more RAM, you can probably replace the 16 gigabyte inside, which is two by eight with two by 16. It's going to be a little bit expensive, but if you need 32 gigabytes for some reason, maybe in the future, sure, why not? Other than that, it's pretty much set on upgrades. I mean, those knock to offense, you, you're not gonna have uh, any chance of finding better uh, than these. I mean, it, they're 80 millimeter and it's almost nobody producing uh, 80 millimeter fans anymore. So, you know, at least knock to us supplying these uh, for us to do these kind of upgrades. Uh, I was thinking that maybe in the front, I can do some uh, perforations and modify this plate to kind of get uh, better room for that fan, but we'll see how that's gonna pan out. What can I come up with? Um, the overall layout and engineering of the in insides of the case is very, very good. I'd say much better than the HP. And uh, this is what I mean. You'll see how the side internal metal plate uh, slides forward once you remove the front panel uh completely it's on hinges so you have very very good access and room inside to work with uh, to install any components uh, to install that site um, ssd drive to install that side or front actually uh, intake fan uh, very well thought out and engineered i've seen that done uh, by some of the uh, dell computers as well and i wish hp went on this route as well and big plus and kudos for Lenovo of not including uh, a DVD drive, which I think it's a complete waste. Uh, this, is, this is one of the negatives on the HP Gaming Pavilion desktop. Uh, nobody needs these, don't put them in. They're just wasting space inside the box. And uh, more space you take, uh, the less volume of air you have uh, for cooling. Uh, you will see on the, uh, the Lenovo, there's no DVD drive, there's nothing like that. And there's a lot more room above that Victory Can 3 fan. So you can install even the tallest and higher performance fans for that uh, heatsink if you want in the future. But as you can see, uh, in gaming, temperatures stay very low. Again, ambient temperature in the room is 22 degrees Celsius. 
uh, the CPU is staying way under 70 degrees, around 65, uh, 66, uh, even the heaviest gaming uh, sessions. The graphics card stays cool around and under 70 degrees as well. And this is again, 1660 Ti. So overall, the components inside stay very cool and quiet uh, when you're gaming uh, with this uh, upgrades and with uh, 22 degrees uh, Celsius ambient. All right, this is pretty much it, guys. Uh, let's do a summary at the end. Uh, let's talk about this uh, uh, little box right there. Uh, is it a valid choice between this one or the HP Pavilion Gaming Desktop? It really depends on the price in my mind. They both trade blows uh, for plus and minus. Some, some, uh, the Lenovo has some things better done. The HP has some other things better done. So it really comes down to how much money uh, you are willing to spend and what kind of deal you're getting. As mentioned, the Lenovo desktop is slightly more expensive, but if you manage to get it on a good deal, uh, like I mentioned, I, I bought this one with all the upgrades, minus the picture again, three that I did. Um, and uh, RTX 2060 for a little bit over $500 on eBay. If you find something like this, absolutely by all means get it. Uh, even without the upgrades, if you see it around $400, go ahead and grab it so you can do some upgrades on your own. And even if you see some deals on Lenovo that they're selling in this one for a good price, go ahead and grab it. Um, if you are comparing them price to price uh, with the HP, if the prices are exactly the same, I'll go with HP just because of the sheer volume of the case and uh, more of the upgradability uh, options that you can do um, with the 92 millimeter fans and bigger space for taller video cards, uh, bigger power supply, that's uh, a big plus. But again, uh, if you get this one on a good deal, why not? I'm gonna do some more follow-up videos on this one. Uh, ask me anything. Uh, ask me what uh, kind of upgrades would like to would you like to see uh, done on this computer? Uh, as mentioned, I'm going to do a video with uh, the power draw um, a measurement of, with kilowatt from the wall. See how much power we are pulling with the 1660 Ti and then with the RTX 2060. I'm really curious to see what exactly the numbers are. I know it performs well with no problem, uh, but at the same time, I'd like to know the numbers. Uh, we'll do the same for the HP and do side by side again. That's pretty much it guys. Hit the thumbs up if you like the video. Stay tuned to the channel for more videos uh, and content like this. If you're new, think about subscribing. That's definitely going to help me a lot. Hit the thumbs up. As always guys, you have a wonderful day.